if you remember what I said in the last episode, I said that it is our responsibility as managers to create an environment that makes best utilization of humans and their interaction with each other. Right? At the end of the day, if you simulate an environment that takes care of a person's needs, that gives them the right kind of challenges, that makes sure we take advantage of their adaptations, that makes sure they take advantage of their adaptations in your environment, then you would have built a successful environment to work in. So in this episode, we're going to start diving deeper into these different adaptations that humans have, and not just humans, but a lot of different creatures, but specifically humans have, um, so that we can learn how to use them in the future. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is pattern recognition, right? This is something that's common, not just to humans, but all, almost all living creatures. Um, in specific with human beings, the fundamental goal is survival, right? And survival depends on obtaining rewards and avoiding danger. In, at, at its core, it's just about getting the prizes, avoiding the negative consequences or avoiding, avoiding danger, right? So as you can see here, the rewards could be something like food or social connection. The danger could be something like harm or social exclusion. At the end of the day, social connection and social exclusion are important for us too. They're adaptations. You can't survive in loneliness. In fact, research was done recently that showed that, you know, living your life alone with complete social isolation is worse than smoking 15 packs of cigarettes a day, right? It hurts humans to be disconnected from other humans. Um, we seek rewards and avoid danger by using perception and action. Perception is trying to figure out what the um, consequences of our actions will be. So we perceive, different, we, we are able to understand different things and action, which is the minute you understand something, you act upon it, right? Or you act upon um, some understanding of the environment that we have. So perception and action are enhanced by cognition, right? And we have different kinds of cognition, but mainly it's about categorization. It's about pattern recognition. It's about hierarchical processing. One thing that comes below another thing. It's about memory. It's about creating a mental model. Like, you know what your neighborhood looks like inside your head, imagination, creativity, and planning. So at the end of the day, uh, we'll understand that the brain is a prediction machine, right? And it aims to reduce uncertainty in our lives because a lot of things around us are uncertain. We don't know. There's no rule book for life. And for us, it's important to categorize everything, put it in a shelf so that we're able to retrieve that at will, right? So, so this is the, this is actually a unified view of psychology, right? And we're obviously going to deep dive, dive deeper into this and figure out the nitty gritties. So the first thing you need to understand about pattern recognition is that you've been doing it since you were a child, right? So when a teacher repeats A, B, and C repeatedly to a child, uh, the child says C after it hears A and B in order. The process of pattern recognition matches information received from the environment with information previously stored in the brain, right? So it connecting memories and information perceived is a step of pattern recognition known as identification. So the minute we recognize a pattern, so the minute you see a cat in real life and somebody tells you, hey, that's a cat, you now create this matched pattern of cat and the word cat, C-A-T, right? And that's what language is about. That's what English and teaching people uh, a language, that's why it's important, right? So the minute uh, you made that association, the next time you see a cat, you can identify that it's a cat from your brain's repository, right? So pattern recognition allows us to read words, appreciate music, detect threats, make predictions about the future, recognize faces and more. So humans, cannot easily differentiate correlation from causation because it does not come naturally to us. And this is something about false pattern recognition. So when I started speaking about pattern recognition, I never told you that the patterns recognized are accurate, right? We, we generate patterns for things that have no patterns. We can generate wrong patterns. For example, if, um, you know, every time the bell rings, uh, pizza comes, you start associating bell ringing with pizza coming in. So in the past, many, many centuries in the past, when humans were uneducated, didn't have, you know, res resources to actually read or learn anything, every time there was a storm or a rain or, you know, there was some natural disaster, we used to blame it on random things. We used to do something called misattribution or false pattern recognition. We used to say, hey, every time I eat this food, it rains. Every time, you know, um, you know, I say these bad things about the other person, there's thunderstorm. Right. And maybe that happened one or two times and then you start misattributing patterns. And that's because it's a fundamental tendency of human brains to do that. Right. It's our job to generate patterns and create it with each other. And, and that's the fundamental study of science. Right. It's a fundamental study of 
of anything of trying to make the right connections right you study anything it's about making the right connections if you if you really think about it at the end of the day you know you can study that from nature by being very observant by understanding that every time you know it's autumn leaves start falling so eventually you start creating a pattern between seasons and leaves you can either sit in front of a tree and do that you know observe the tree for an entire year or you can study it from somebody who's done that in front of a tree for many years and what you're doing with this course is essentially taking everything that you know i and my team have studied uh, across many different years and you're just saying hey i'm going to learn from these people because they're saving me the time right that is the idea of education in short you you save time by looking at the accurate pattern recognitions that other people have made so false pattern recognition bane of humanity the worst thing that uh, you could do it is you would be able to define a completely uneducated person as somebody who makes the who makes very bad pattern recognition it's it's just a tendency of the brain uh, but they're attributing the wrong things to the wrong things one example here and you will study this again and again is how germs cause bad smells right it's a causation when you have germs you smell bad and germs also cause disease but just because somebody smells bad it doesn't mean they have disease even though those two things are often found together so a correlation just because two things are happening together doesn't mean it's causation doesn't mean the bad smell is causing the disease or the disease is causing the bad smell it's the germs that are causing it and our job with accurate pattern recognition is to find out what is causing things and what what two things are just correlation what two things just happened by coincidence because believe it or not a lot of things in the world happen because of coincidence because there's so many variables involved right so here's an example of pattern recognition that i want to take you to through and it's called the skinner box experiment bf skinner this amazing psychologist scientist in the past um invented a box known as the skinner box to test something called operant conditioning an operant conditioning chamber permits experimenters to study behavioral training um to study behavior and training by teaching a subject animal to perform certain actions so there's a small lever or a switch in the box and every time the animal press this presses the switch then food is delivered so you don't have to look at the box you don't have to look at all this text it's very simple inside the box you press a lever food comes in so when a rat correctly performs the behavior the chamber mechanism delivers food or some other reward In some cases the mechanism delivers a punishment for incorrect uh responses or missing responses right if 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 the rat is um if the if it presses something else then it's punished so the rat eventually realizes hey i have to press the lever to get food and anything else will cause problems so what this person did this bf skinner guy after a while of training the rats to use the lever he removed the lever and placed a series of hungry pigeons in a cage attached to an automatic mechanism that delivered food to the pigeon at random intervals with no relation what whatsoever to their actions so until now when the lever was pressed food was put in now food was put in randomly whether the lever was pressed or not maybe every 15 minutes or every 20 minutes or something he discovered that the pigeons associated the delivery of the food with whatever random action they were doing at the time right so if they were spinning clockwise then they would you know they would start attributing the fact that hey i got food because i was spinning clockwise so if a pigeon was pecking the floor when food was delivered it started doing that whenever it was hungry one bird and this is you know directly from the paper one bird was conditioned to turn counter clockwise about the cage making two or three turns between reinforcements you know some of them started turning their head some of them started pecking on the floor whatever they were doing when food was delivered they started doing it when they were hungry and this is known as superstition right your parents probably told you a lot of stu- superstitious beliefs when you were younger you know some things that they had misattributed those are examples of false pattern recognitions right so the experiment might be said to demonstrate superstition and false pattern recognition the bird behaves as if there were a causal or actual connected relationship between its behavior and the presentation of food although in reality the relationship was casual so i'm telling you the difference between causal and casual causal means something caused another thing casual means two things happened at the same time but they weren't related they just happened to be at the same time it's a casual relationship almost all human superstitions happen because of this from explanations of thunder and lightning to bad luck to cutting nails at night it's an example of pattern recognition gone wrong so in a management scenario this happens very often say there's an employee right maybe employee x and he's put on five projects and all five projects fail it's very easy to conclude that employee x is the root cause of project failure 
However, it could very well be that each project has its own cause of failure that did not include employee X. In most immature companies, employee X would be identified as a root cause and fired. Hey, you were on all five projects, all those five projects failed, you are the problem, right? Determining correlation versus causation is very important or you will keep essentially doing random things and those doing those things while running a company isn't a smart idea. It's very important to measure the correlation of those results independently with respect to those results. So is it causation or is it correlation? We need to figure that out. So most companies have the idea of a feedback loop. So in the words of, you know, Taleb, experts and analysts who make predictions but do not face the repercussion of those predictions make casual relationships and often co confuse correlation with causation. So it's obvious, right? If if you're somebody third party, if you're studying this at an MBA or, or, or any course and you know, you're completely distanced from a situation and the situation says, Hey, this employee was in five projects, all five projects failed. What do you have to conclude? Most people would say that's a bad employee, right? But if you're very close to the situation and you know, all the variables involved, maybe all of those five projects were really hard projects. Maybe all of those five projects uh, were in the time of recession. Maybe all of those five projects were in a bad market that had no other winners. Nobody else in the market won, right? So it's really important for you to see the entire picture to gather as much data and to create something called a feedback loop. So in the previous example, the best way to avoid an employee X scenario is to create a feedback loop with a chain of events from employee X's performance to the success of the project. So you break it down. Right, you find out each data point and see, you know, for each KPI that the employee was given, how much did the employee succeed or how much did he or she um, uh, accomplish? So for example, if an employee X creates a partnership plan, the first thing that's gonna happen is the partnerships are gonna increase the number of partnerships. Then there's an increased number of sales. Then there's project success. For you to just make this assumption that employee X's partnership plan and the project success are, you know, somehow correlated without looking at the middle bits, then you are in for a bad management lifestyle, right? Instead, if you can measure it, if you can break it down and see how many partnerships does this person actually create. And if you realize, you know, the employee went out to meet 100 partners and maybe 90 of them onboarded and that, you know, probably didn't increase sales. But the employee is not to blame in this situation because the employee actually accomplished his or her tasks. So it's important for you to break down the task, not as something vague like project success, but put numbers on it put exact specifics on it and try to break it down to the loop. What is the immediate goal? What does that lead up to? What does that lead up to? So creating a chain and a feedback loop is important unless you want to have employee X scenarios where you misattribute certain things to certain people. Cool. So what are the solutions to false pattern recognition? You break down things into a chain of events from trigger to end result, right? You break it down, differentiate correlation from causation. And as we're studying the statistics part of this course of meta, You'll understand how to do that, how to differentiate correlation from causation. One of the most important things you have to create immediate feedback loops. You can't have that data six months later, seven months later, you test for repeatability. Is this repeatable? Can this happen again? Right? So if you keep correlating, uh, maybe cutting your hair to thunderstorms in the evening, do it again. See, cut your hair in the evening again and see if the thunderstorm comes out again. Right? And if it happens 10 days in a row, then you start creating a pattern. Right. But in most companies, things are only done once or twice and then conclusions are made. You cannot make conclusions from doing something once or twice. You need to repeat it again and again and again. For example, one thing we've learned is that running ads very early uh, into the into a product is very correlated with the success of the product. Right. So repeat and we've repeated it so many times that now we know it's true. It's not like earlier we were afraid of doing it. Try to prove yourself wrong in companies. You'll find that often the relationship between different people is a lot about trying to prove that, Hey, I'm right. I had this thought I'm right. And you know, that's where I think founders are really different from employees because founders are always about, you know what? It doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong. The company has to succeed because if the company doesn't succeed, then I'm out on the road. That's why, you know, it's important for you to, to not be distanced from something. You have to be involved in it, right? So, uh, there's a law of large numbers, which is try to, you know, if you're trying to create a correlation between cutting your hair and thunderstorms, try to repeat it 10,000 times, right? If you repeat it 10,000 times and it happens every, and a thunderstorm happens every time you cut your hair, you can be pretty damn sure that cutting your hair causes a thunderstorm, right? Because you'll also make sure that you'll repeat it 10,000 times where you don't cut your hair and there is no thunderstorm, right? So that's why large numbers makes a lot of sense. True and false pattern recognition helped us survive. The brain is a prediction machine. 
it's not concerned with the idea of being right it's concerned with the idea of survival right so it aims to reduce uncertainty in our life if you didn't you know if you're somebody in the 1300s um 1300 B- bc and uh, you were sitting somewhere and you know you were just uh, looking at the skies and you know it was there was a thunderstorm or there was a rain it would scare you right loud noises big flashing lights it would scare you and you had to create a story in your head for you to be able to avoid that uncertainty because the human brain doesn't do well with i don't know what that is and it requires a certain sense of training to be okay with being okay with not knowing something it takes a certain sense of training to be okay with not knowing something and at the end of the day you know we've the human brain creates an illusion in order to overcome the ambiguity of the world around us and that works really great for survival but it doesn't really work well if you want to create a company if you want to manage people if you want to do all of those things if you want to study science we need to look beyond our our mechanism of creating illusions to to survive to create that story for ourselves and to move out of it and to try to see things objectively try to th- repeat things as many times so we get an accurate story you still need a story but why not it be the real one why not it be an actual correlation so you're able to figure out what the truth really is so trying to be a good manager things like searching for the truth things like you know attaining objectivity they're all kind of the same thing right at the end of the day they're all understanding that the brain is an illusion making machine and and trying to trying to work with that trying to use pen paper and a computer maybe a calculator to to measure is very important if you want to be a good manager all right guys 